about to start the movie. Get your popcorn, get your popcorn. Go and Let the show begin. Pioneer Football League Championship Edition. We are finally here. Year two, the championship venue is Evander Childs High School. We have five games on the schedule for today. We are at the fifth game, the Harlem Jets and the Bronx Buccaneers, the headline. So let's, before getting to the headline that's going on behind us right now, let's talk first about what we have seen today. In our first game, we had the Steelers take on the Nittany Lions. Fritz, tell us about it. It was a running bowl. That's all they did was run the ball. 50 yards, 20 yards, 5 yards, 90 yards. It was hella intense. Now, the Nittany Lions came up just short with scoring a touchdown at the last play of the game. It just came up a little short against the Steelers. So that was the 10 and under game. In the 12 and under game, and you see we got some action back here. In our 12 and under game, we had the Long Island Spartans taking their first championship. Final score 41 to 0. Um, they left absolutely no doubt in this one. Tell us about it, Shamal. Those Long Island Spartans lighting up the scoreboard all day. They definitely didn't disappoint. And it's the uh, only the second undefeated season in the PFL. Accurate. Shout out to the Long Island Spartans. Third, actually. I'm sorry. Third. 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 Harlem Jets and Bronx Colts 14 and unders. The oh, Bronx Colts third. 14 and unders went into their second consecutive uh, championship game, but were upset by the Bronx Steelers. In that game, it was uh, absolutely we call it a slobber knocker, where both <laughs> teams are smacking each other around. Tell us about it. Oh man. Physical, man. Like, I, I, I said it, man. Like it, it, these teams, these young boys, they play and they play physical. They don't stop. They relentless, and they 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 the younger machines, man. Like every every down was a here you go, here you go, and they kept coming with it, man. Like so today was a beautiful day. If you missed it, sucks to be you, man. We had high schools out here looking at players and such, especially that 14 division. There's some big boys. It looked like JV football out there. And we also had some college coaches out here, as promised. Uh, Monroe shot by for a, a, a good look, uh, and we had some other folks take a look. And I know more people will take a look on the video. We'll definitely send that film out for all of the uh, hopefuls to go into uh, college and universities and such, whether it be on the junior college level or the four-year institutions. But that was all, an absolutely awesome game. Now, speaking of institutions and colleges, we have our collegiate level. And I'll take it back to Jay to tell us what happened in the collegiate level game. Oh, man. That was a battle of the beast, baby. Four quarters, one down, one hit. It was it was just thunder. I got to give it to the Knights, man. We, uh, we we didn't underestimate them, and they came with everything they, we thought they was. Bapa, respect to you. Respect to Ty Kim. Respect to all y'all boys that was bowling. You know, Tuki, all y'all. I respect all y'all. You know what I'm saying? We, Goldie, everybody. It was, a, it was a hell of a game. Yeah. But uh, like like we told y'all before, baby. Uh, Congratulations, on over. The Colts, baby, we machines, baby. We don't, we don't stop. We program one way. The game actually lived up to its billing. The Colts came out firing first with the slant pass to Tim Fears that went the distance. They battled back and forth, and ultimately it was a quarterback run for by T.J. Glenn, the uh, it seems sure. like perpetual all all star slash MVP guy who. Uh, whose score actually made the difference in this one. It was an absolutely awesome, awesome game. So, real quick, let's talk about this 15 to 17 game. As you can see in the background, we'll clear out for a second. We have the stands packed for this one. Right now, the Harlem Jets are down by the score of six to nothing to the Bronx Buccaneers. We'll give you full coverage of this one as soon as it goes final. But again, Pioneer Football League, who does it better? Nobody. <laughs> While we're on the subject, let's talk about what happened during the uh, halftime. So we had a halftime show by the Bronx Steelers cheerleaders. We had an obstacle course where a bunch of young boys got uh, a welcoming nice. committee by Cone, which was pretty hilarious. Uh, we had our field goal contest where a bunch of grown men attempted to kick a ball through a field goal post. They found out 
it's not as easy as it looks, not at all. We had uh, DJ Code Blue on the ones and twos. He did a show for one of our half times. We just had a whole bunch, of, a ton of fun. We raffled off an LT jersey. We raffled off a Hakeem Nix jersey. We raffled off a Randall, uh, Ruben Randall jersey. We raffled off a Pioneer League All Star jersey from last year. We're doing a whole bunch of big things, and there was a ton of food, which I definitely got acclimated with. The macaroni and cheese was on point. The chicken wings were on point. I saw mashed potatoes. They had donuts in the morning. He didn't say breakfast. potatoes. He said potatoes. That's potatoes. how you know it was good. Yeah. The lasagna. Oh, the lasagna. Yeah. Was the lasagna. Yeah. So we went from donuts and coffee in the morning to hot chocolate, coffee, and uh, food. Uh, food in so the lunchtime. Good. We had burgers and dogs for lunch. And then dinner time was the full spread. Who else you know serves three course meals at championship games? No, five. For the second year in a row. Congratulations, Coach Ali and the Harlem Jets. They represented very well. The Buccaneers, great job as well. Uh, in front of a host of fans at a Vander Childs at a packed house. The game was an absolute slobber knocker. It definitely lived up to its building. building. So, uh, what were your thoughts on the day? Oh man, I think so far today has been a great day. Action packed football, Pioneer football. Team, so Pioneer football League teams, new teams included. You have a chance to bid to see where we're going to go with this thing for 2014. There are a few parameters to this thing. You need to have a field that can accommodate a large number of fans, as we saw today. Two, you need to buy, can provide some type of concession. Now, the benefit is the concessions go toward your program, Bronx Buccaneers program did the concessions here today at Evander, and uh, the line was wrapped around the block. I just finished my second plate of macaroni and cheese and chicken, ribs, and a whole bunch of stuff. Not so, to mention the lunch and breakfast we had earlier this day. <laughs> yes, the food was absolutely amazing. Three course meals. So besides that, we have the opportunity uh, for all Pioneer teams to make some money off the of ticket sales. All the teams, uh, by and large, made some good money off of ticket sales because they were definitely in the door. The other thing that you need is to have a venue that you could have. we could have all day, five games. Because we have Junior Pee Wees, the 10 and unders, the 12 and unders, the Pee Wees, the 14 and under intermediates, the Senior Division 15 to 17, and the Collegiate Division 18 to 21. So we'll go into the off season uh, in a few weeks, but first, it is now officially All-Star season. Oh man, All-Star season. It's crazy because everyone's hitting us up. Hey, did I make that list? Why am I not on this list? I don't want to play football no more because I'm not on this list. Shout but. out to Goldie. God, <laughs> God bless. We, we got kids still playing PSAL ball who didn't even play with us. <laughs> yeah, and they're like, oh my yeah. God, I want to play. I want to.